Want to buy or sell a home or property? Want free info, resources, or support? The team at communityown.org can help. With free classes, property searches, and real estate referrals, communityown.org is the one. Communityown.org. We got us. To the edge and then a little bit more No telling what is in store Except for one too many Throwing heat of Flama Blanca Got them powers like Kenny Hoping late like Dennis And serving up the sauces You all those girls on Instagram As fake as Santa Claus is not house Atlanta's premier recording studio Is Vibe Studio ATL Brought to you by Grammy winning producer And ATL's own Looney Tunes with multiple recording rooms, podcast rooms, photo walls, and more, Vibe Studio has all your recording and film needs covered. Check out VibeStudiosEmpire.com for more info and to book your session today. Find out why all the hottest artists have ended up at Vibe. What's up, guys? Today we are here with the Ruetta Tea Tumbler. They recently called me and they said, Austin, perfect for coffee too, so that's what we're gonna do today. Touch water on the kettle, and I start out with 19 grams of whole bean coffee. Everyone's favorite sound in the morning. With most coffee makers, you have to have a funnel like a V60 with filters, or you have to have a French press or a Chemex, and all of that is expensive, it's complicated, but with the Bruetta, all you have to do is you add your grounds right into the cup, and then with their fine mesh strainer here, acts as a French press for you. So after your water finishes heating up, all you have to do, add it straight in. And you're ready to go. Is there a way to end a coffee commercial? No? Okay. And now, everybody, MC Search. MC Search. MC Search. MC Search. MC Search. Search will never stand still. Yes, yes, yes. Party people in the place to be. It's the other white meat MC search officially walking into the studio. It's been a while. I'm back. It feels good to be, you know, you need a little vacation and need the time to take that clean air in through your N95 mask that you breathe while you're walking to the streets, protecting yourself from the contaminants of the planet Earth. You know, you just got to protect yourself at all times, man. Instead of having a gat, I now have a mask. It's, it's 2021, get it right. Uh, speaking of getting it right, I want to thank our sponsors. You know, you got to, guys who pay the bills, man. You know, Bruetta Tea, an amazing tea company, um, loose leaf tea, and a patented tumbler so that you get all the tea, none of the leaves. We'll leave the leaves for, you know, Sully and his new company. It's not a game, people! Not a fuck, it's not a fucking game, people. Thank you to Bruetta T. Thank you to my beautiful partners. Um, we also did something special for my man, Dr. Dre, from Yo! MTV Raps. We did the Yo! MTV Raps Berry T uh, to help with his GoFundMe. So if you want to go and help and support my brother from another, uh, my man, of course, my dear friend, uh, you can go to Bruetta.com. And you can buy the Dr. Dre Yo MTV Raps Berry Tea. So shout out to that dude. Um, good dude. Love that dude. Um, speaking of people that uh, I love and care about, you know, that's some Hollywood shit, right? Like, oh, I love these people. I care about. Them. But the real deal is like, you know, when you do something with people and it forever is indelible in people's hearts and minds, you, you know, you have an affection for these people. You find out, you know, that they're human beings behind the show. 
did a show uh, a couple of years back. A lot of y'all have remembered it. You've been talking about it, tweeting about it in in this Twitter world. Uh, it's a show called uh, The White Rapper Show. And um, my dear friend Elliot Wilson got on uh, the interweb about three months ago and was like talking about it. And then all of a sudden people started talking more and more about it. So I was like, you know what? I need to have these brothers back on the show because it's only right. And when I say brothers, I don't mean just the dudes because I mean brothers in a, in, a, in a universal, worldly kind of kind of manner. You know how they call, you know, dudes. Du like, girls call each other dudes now. So it's like, I got my brothers and my, you know what? I'll just keep it right. My brothers and my sister and my sisters, they're, they're all here. Um, it is the White Rapper Show reunion. And uh, they're all backstage now. M most of these people have not seen each other in well over a decade. Um, they might have been stalking each other on the interweb. I don't know. They might have been like outside. Like I, I'll keep it a buck. I, I was following Misfit in Brooklyn a couple of times. It's, it's, it's a long story. It was bad. It was dark days for me. But, um, you know, I'm just really glad they're all here in 2021 doing their thing. So uh, it's time to bring them into the room. Ladies and gentlemen, Shamrock. Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. Sully. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen, Hello. Misfit, a hundred proof, what and up? just rhyme are hey. in the what building. Up? Ladies and gentlemen, what up, yeah? The crew of the White Rapper Show. Love, 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 love. Look at all man. these people, man. Look at all these beautiful, so beautiful, just beautiful <laughs> people, man. It's just beautiful. So I want to start. Obviously, I want to start with the dude who uh, who won the whole thing. Uh, maybe you guys remember him, maybe you don't. His name is uh, Shamrock. Um, yes, sir. Shamrock, first of all, congratulations Thank you. on, on Thank that you. win. I, I do want to share something with you that you don't know. All right. um, and uh, again, I, I want to start the show off by sharing some, some things that you might not realize. All right. So when the show was coming on the air, I realized, you know what, there might be an opportunity for these young men and women to go beyond whatever the show was. So I was like, you know what? Let me talk to some record labels and see if I could like secure a record deal for the winner. You know, the hundred thousands, the hundred thousand, that's great money. Like you said, if I got to wash some drawers for a hundred thousand, fuck it, I'm gonna wash some drawers. It is what it is, right? <laughs> Misfit, you didn't have to wash no drawers, did you? I think maybe you did. No, I wasn't there long enough. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um. So I went out uh, before the, even the show came out. I had one episode in a can. I went to a bunch of labels. I went to see Sylvia Roan. I went to see Jimmy Iovine. Ooh, yeah. I went to see yep. a bunch of people. They weren't, they weren't fucking with it. Nobody wanted to fuck with it. The day of the show, the finale, I'm in New York. And we're having this big party in Brooklyn. My man Mikey Palms had a club. We're having a big party. And I went and did Funkmaster Flex the night of, and I'm, I'm talking a gang of caca on that show. Like I'm talking crap, like just, you know, having a good time laughing. Yeah. And three nights before the show, three nights before the show, Ed, I get a call from Kanye and Kanye says to me, who's going to win? <laughs> and I said, I, I can't tell you who's going to win. It's against my contract. You're my man, but I can't tell you. <laughs> He said, well, whoever wins, we want them on good music. Damn. And I'm Never like, knew that. Word? Never yeah. knew that. <laughs> I was like, word? Like, for real? Because I got some stories, too, but I never knew that. Okay. So, 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 th so at the time, Kanye had this little white dude with him that ran with him that was his A&R dude. I can't remember the kid's name. He was mad funny. And he ran around with him. So we're in Brooklyn, and we're at this party, and the place is packed. I mean... It was Pat and everybody in New York. We had the number one show in the country. Um, I don't even know if you guys know that. We were the first VH1 show to be number one in the country, 1849. Yeah. All, mm -hmm. all eight weeks of the run, 10 weeks of the run. The finale was the highest rated show in the history of VH1 before Love and Hip Hop and Basketball Wives and all that. We were just crushing. Come in, the little white dude that runs and does AR for good music comes up to me, goes, Yo. John Brown got this, right? He got this. John Brown's going to win this. And I'm like, yo, you're going to have to watch and see. She's going to have to watch. 
yo, that's my man. I love John Brown. Hallelujah, holla back, all that shit. <laughs> so I'm like, right, you're going to have to watch. You're going to have to see. Everybody we're doing the ending finale. Every, everybody love forever. I love Atlanta. Every, everybody's like all digged in, digged in. And I'll never forget, I was on the stage. There's dead silence. They announced the winner. I look around. Little white dude's gone. I call Kanye. They didn't want to fuck with Shamrock. They wanted to sign John Brown. <laughs> they should have. They should have. And I'm like, yo. So I'm like, yo. Anyway, so I always give Kanye the gas face for that forever. Because um, that's like walking just, in you know, and whatever. parents having sex. You should have told him that. <laughs> no, I, no, I just yo because yo. I mean, you know, I just wanted to keep it a buck because one of the things that y'all don't realize, all of y'all don't realize, and I want you know, in my contract, because people always say, oh, you ran the show. Oh, I'm a cast member like y'all. Man. The only difference is you're the contestants. I was the host. I don't own the show. I never own the show. I was a cast member. Like in, in my paycheck, it's a cast member like everybody else. <laughs> right? So I didn't fucking own the show. So I didn't have any control. But in my contract, it says in my Viacom contract, I cannot fuck with any of y'all professionally in perpetuity for life. Huh. Couldn't help with your music careers, couldn't help with acting careers, couldn't help with modeling careers, could nothing. And if I did, it would interfere with my career and, and the winner and all of that. Yeah. So I would see Shamrock because we moved both into the same neighborhood. We were both in Orlando. Yep. And Shamrock would be like, yo, help me. And I'm like, nah, I didn't say it like that. No, no, no. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I'm not, hold on, hold on. Shamrock, I'm not saying you said, yo, help me. You said, yo, can you support my project? Can you give me support? And I was like, no, because I didn't want to fuck with your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so so this is this is inherently true. Me and Search got the lawyers involved after the show. We were trying to see if we could move, how we could move. Right. And, oh. and it wasn't just me. I think that you were trying to see if you could, you absolutely. know, walk to Persia That's and absolutely. that kind of thing. That's exactly and so right. so we found out pretty quickly that we weren't going to be able to do that. Right? right. So at that time, we couldn't, and nobody on the show could sign a deal for a year and a day after the airing of the last show. So uh, I had I, I, I didn't know I had Kanye or good music even on the line. But by the time the finale ran, it didn't even matter if I won because I had every label in Atlanta trying to mess with me. Right. You, feel me? you feel me? So I wouldn't have signed with Kanye, period. But I, but I, I, I think he's amazing. I really right. do. All the craziness aside, that dude's a musical genius. So uh, definitely search. I wanted to see. I've always, you know got at you on social or whenever we bumped into each other in the city, see how we can move. And I, and shit, let's, let's get it still. We I'm right down the road, but I, I know you're moving and, uh, and, and I'm not even really doing the artist thing anymore, but there there was a lot going on, man. And I do, I do have a slight regret not doing the finale in New York. Cause I didn't know who was that in tune to it. But I had been lying to all my people in Atlanta for so long. I told them the finale was live just so they would leave me alone. Oh, wow. So then when the finale was taped, everybody looked at me and I was like, y'all would have told everybody. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, man, that's crazy. I never knew that, bro. Yeah. No, nah, it was crazy. And uh, it, it, was, it was right after I left Flex's show, um, like my phone was blowing up, like yo, da 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 da. So what happens? So you're in Atlanta. Obviously, yeah. the announcement happens. Yeah. And then the floodgates open. Man, and it was then, so crazy. Oh, my was, bad. No, 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 no. Please, I want to hear all about it, please, because I don't know anything about this. It was it was crazy. So I think um, there was a time where you and I had actually um, I was at the radio station in Atlanta doing the morning show, and they called you in. So like I was there live, and you were there, and I, and we might have even done that twice, and. Um, the day of the finale, a lot of people don't know this, but me and John Brown, we were the last two left by the end of the show. We had to do so much media the week leading up. And the day of the finale, I had to wake up. We both had to wake up at like 6 a.m., get on a conference call, and we were patched into radio stations for like the next eight hours. Mm -hmm. So I was like exhausted. We were doing one show after the other. And this is where I got a lot of respect for John Brown, too, because he could have dialed it in. He could have acted like he didn't give a shit because he already knew how it was going. He did what he had to do. And there were a couple of times where the DJs were trying to get real slick and funny. 
and I'm and I'm just trying to not mess up the bag. I'm trying to do good and just like let the show air. Let no spoilers. I want the bag. And uh, halfway through, John Brown was just like he was like, "Yo, Sham, he's trying to be funny. Like, don't don't even talk to him, bro. Like, he just he we were we were tired. Like halfway through, and we were kind of over the jokes and over it. I'll never forget how he just kind of stuck up for himself a little bit and for me. And uh, we talked on the phone after. He wished me well. We bumped in, into each other in Cali when we did Wild and Out, and Just Rhyme was there. That's the last time I seen Just Rhyme, but that was like, man. Any and then you know, Misfit came down to the A lot. Anytime I saw yeah. somebody associated with the show, it was like you saw your cousin that you hadn't seen for like years. So even seeing y'all now, like I ain't seen Soli face to face in a minute. Hundred proof. We've been on social. It's like it took a pandemic for this to come back together. But I'm so thankful because it's just like I see y'all happy and healthy, and that's that's all that matters. Like the the show is whatever, but it's it's great to see you. So I I give it back to you, Search. I yield. No, 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 no. It's it's just it's really cool to hear and and passing and passing to your right, Sully, aka Bobby Sullivan, what up? aka hey. the Cannabis King of Boston. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't even know it was like that. To be honest, I see you, Sully. Yeah, come on up, man. Come on up. I so, wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. Hey, no, I listen, I got to, you know, I'm going to put my rapper swag on a thousand on every one of y'all for this entire podcast. It's going down. But um, you know, you left the show when you when you left the show, there was there was a lot of I remember there was a lot of people that that whole snitching thing was like people talked about, "Yo, I respect my man. My man stood up, yada da da da." And I'm like, yo, it wasn't snitching. There's a difference between snitching and and doing what you have to do as a responsibility for like the show and telling, you know, whatever. But you had a real code and that code goes deep for you. Like it goes really deep. Um, and I wonder what the what the word was like when you came home. And uh, when I came home, it was everybody was like, you did it. That's what you were supposed to do. You know what I mean? And that I feel like everybody just knew. I mean, that's how I was. And I mean, just uh, the way I was brought up. It, I feel like it was the wording at the time. It was just like, I wish John Boy was here too, because we could talk about it. Like, um, shout out John Boy. Shout out Persia. Shout out G-Chow. Um, but in reality, it was, uh, it was just the way you worded it. I felt like I was being told to like, Cause we are like leading up to that time. Like if, if you watch back, I said to everybody like, Hey, we should just do like a Wu Tang type joint. where We all just kind of each of us spit and then we'll do something wild for the video. Who cares? You know what I mean? They don't want us to do the normal everyday, you know what I mean? Garbage that's happening. They want us to do something different. And I felt like we went the wrong way. So I felt like leading up to that moment, I was in my head, like they're making us lose this. I'm standing up here because they didn't listen to me because <laughs> I just thought we should have just wrapped just like the, the winning team did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the way it was worded, it just felt like I was being told like, go tell me why it's their fault. You lost. And where I come from, like you take your L's and that's it. So I just, I kind of feel like I was kind of getting like, at, at a, I had issues before. If you remember, I had issues during the, um, the family feud um, situation right, when right. Cham was like, to describe OJ, delicious, greatest quote. Listen, of the entire show. I looked like I looked like a dummy at the time, but everybody who covered that show was like, "Good answer." Might have been the most intelligent <laughs> moment on the entire program. For real, best uh, best answer, man. It was and it was perfect. nutritious. It was, oh, nutritious! <laughs> That's what it was. Serge, Serge, you met my buddy Black Josh. He yes. he would say nutritious in my face for like three years, man. Oh Shout out to God. Josh. Just, but back to you, Sully. Keep keep going. Oh yeah, no, I was just saying, just in general, just where I come from and what it is. It's just people always you just kept, keep your mouth shut and move forward. And I feel like that was just kind of like it for me because when I heard it, it just something in my head that had been ingrained in me since the beginning. You know what I mean? It was just kicked in, and I was like, all right. I'll just write a dope six, a dope 16 and I'll be out. And it was a dope 16. So I was, you know what I mean? Um, for, I, uh, really, really quick I, before we get yeah, going, please, go ahead, please. hundred proof. I love your shirt, man. <laughs> I made it myself. I, I, dude, I love your shirt. And what up, just Ryan? What up, misfit? How are yeah. you? Yeah. You guys look great. 
<laughs> Likewise, bro. It's crazy. I thought Just Ryan would be joining us from the autonomous zone in Seattle <laughs> right now. <laughs> hey. Yo, bro, I might be there right now. Do you know where I'm at right now? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I love sorry, that. Sorry, sorry. We're going to get there. Ansel button. <laughs> but the, um, the thing that um, a lot of my homeboys, you know, a lot of MC dudes that I knew um, that I rolled with were like, man, man. Like, because, you know, look, I think we can, it's all fair to say that in hip hop, there's all sorts of people that you roll with. There are all sorts of elements that you roll with. So a lot of my friends had certain bags <laughs> on certain MCs. It's just it was what it was, and I couldn't say anything, you know, obviously. But my man had a bag. He had like ten racks on Sully to win the whole thing. Oh and, my bad! And, he should have called me and said, "He should have told me." <laughs> he no, told me. talk about snitching. Like, come on, man. Like. So, you know, so he was like, yo, man, I can't believe I can't. Why did you tell me? I'm like, yo, it is what it is. But <laughs> did people come up to you and say, yo, you know, oh, I can't, you know, you would have won it. Uh, do you even feel like ever, ever saying like, oh, I wish I would have stayed in. Maybe I would have won it. Is it ever, or do you, do you ever I, think about it that way? I don't, I don't like to think like, I wish I would have, you yeah. know what I mean? Cause that's just not going to help me in, in moving forward in my life at all. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like everything kind of happened the way it was supposed to. Um, I got so much love from the hood when I would go because that was the same time. Like I, I, the stop stitching like movement was mm -hmm. upon us at the time. So when I would go and, and I would travel and when I was touring and stuff, I got so much love from the hood that like, I was like, Oh, I did exactly what I should have done because this is where I belong anyway. So it was just kind of like, it was just what it needed to be. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and um, that's right. Because the whole snowman thing was happening Gucci mm -hmm. and Gucci and, and Jeezy were going at it. One of my favorite lines, I was just reading it. I have it somewhere. I keep Gucci Man's Guide to Greatness book. Yes. Oh my, I, I read it. I read it. I got every an day. autographed copy. I read it every playing. day, right? But one of my favorite <laughs> Gucci Man lines is when Gucci went to jail in 2009 and the judge said, Do you think you're guilty? <laughs> he said to the judge, Bitch, I might be. <laughs> <laughs> And that was like, it's a great, like no it's, you, know, it's, you know, so I'm sure if you went to Atlanta with Shamrock, I'm sure Gucci gave you mad love for like, not look, look, I never made it down. I, but look, but look, I talked to Soli and his father on the telephone after we finished filming. If Soli felt he needed to do that to stick to the code, just the presence of his father on the phone. I wouldn't have wanted to have to answer to him about snitching. So if he felt some type of way on it, I know you did the right thing, brother. Because I talked uh, to your dad and I got how, that presence. That's how I felt, man. And like my, just yeah. my whole family in general and just everybody that I was rolling with and everybody that the people that were around me, you know, it just it just felt like that certain situation. I feel like if you if you had just worded it differently, I probably would have just been like, oh, I'll just go make fun of John Brown. I've been waiting to do this the whole time. Right. I mean, and that was, that was kind of like, since day one, it was like, you know, John Brown had, had the, had the, had the, you know, the bullet on his, on his back. Um, because this question of authenticity was questioned literally from the time Persia and you guys did lights out. It was, it was literally authenticity question, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Um, that I was also, a wild night, right? That dude, was a wild night. For so sure. let me tell you, let me tell y'all something uh -oh. that you don't know about. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, what? I said, I was like, get out for me. I was hiding in the bag. Like, yo, how do we get out of here? First of all, you weren't hiding anywhere. You were in bed going, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Could you please not use that language in front of me? So let's be clear with you. Hey, what, man. Man. Facts, Fair facts. Enough. That's Fair fact enough. though. That's a fact though right there. So let me yep. tell y'all, let me tell y'all something. That's, that's just crazy. That uh, I've never sh I've never shared this with anybody. Uh, well, my wife, my wife and my kids know it. So the first episode, right? Um, very much like you guys, I'd never done a TV show before, and I'd done the pilot uh, a year before, um, and you know, obviously it was a condensed version. It was people that you know weren't even on the show and all of that. And I want to talk about the selection process and you guys, how you guys got picked because i have no idea about that either i just walked in and was like oh here's the contestants um but um i wanted to ask y'all um because when i we did the first episode they were like okay this is what's going to happen this is what's going to happen 
And they were like giving me like this earpiece in my ear. And I'm like, yo, I ain't putting that shit in my ear. And they're like, yo, well, no, 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 you have to put it in your ear because that's how we're going to feed you information. I was like, no, 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 just tell me what I have to do and I'll do it. And they were like, okay, well, you're going to do this and this and this. And I was like, all right, cool. So then I did the first, you know, we did the scene and I was like, you know, I, I think I said something like, I don't give a fuck what y'all do, what we put you through, you're going to rep hip hop to the fullest, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And I walked out, right? And that was, that was it. Whatever I said, I, I don't even remember what I said. But the point was, whatever they told me to say, I said it and I did what I was supposed to do. The entrance to, you know, the outside world, if you want to call it outside it, where you guys were living, and then the control room was literally a hallway away. And in that hallway, in that door, in that control room was obviously all the Ego Trip dudes, but all of the VH1 hierarchy. Mm-hmm. President of VH1, Jim Ackerman, VP, Christian McLaughlin, President of Viacom, Ken Mock from 10x10. Shout out in- to Christian McLaughlin. That's my dude. That's my dude, too. I love that dude. <laughs> we still talk to this day. You know, he runs Comedy Central now. He's the head of programming for Comedy Yo, Central. Yo, please pass my number to Oh, him. yeah, yeah. Tell him I up for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That was my guy. So I do my scene. And I come out, and my wife was there, my old business partner, everybody, my kids. And Jim Ackerman comes out, and he's crying. I, this is no lie. He's crying. like a grown, and, he's, and he's like 6'4", crying. And he says, yo, that was the best television I've ever done in my life. Wow. And I'm like, and, and I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. I'm like, what? I, is this fucking reality? Because I'm about to go outside to Brooklyn and the Bronx and like hang with some dudes who can barely put fucking a nickel together for a 40 ounce and you're crying about the best TV of your life. And my wife was like, that was amazing. Everybody, All right, cool, whatever. I'm like, cool, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I don't need an earpiece and I don't need, you know, none of that. This is my life. You know, it's, this is hip hop. Like, it's easy. <clears throat> but what y'all don't understand is I went back, you know, I was not going to come to New York unless my family was with me. So we went back to the place that they had put us up. I go to sleep. Like 4 o'clock in the morning, I get a call. They're like, you're going to need to be on set at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, why? And they're like, we can't tell you, but you'll see it on the door. And I'm like, okay. And I come back the next day, and there's a sign from the Ego Trip guys that says, you're not going to believe what just happened. And it's John Brown is intimidated or assaulted or something by a black dildo and <laughs> Sully saying something and Persia used the N word oh. and put a dildo in John Brown's face of giant black dildo. <laughs> and just Ron was insulted by the N word <laughs> and all hell broke loose and this is amazing. And that's what it said. And, that's it. and this is amazing television. Cap, cap, cap. And well, then I was told the about the N-word chain. I'm sorry, Misfit. I'm well, sorry. No, like this, like, only the like, second night or something as well, right? It was yeah, like the yeah. first night. It was <laughs> the first night. It was like the first night. Like, I y'all think we just, had just got there. <laughs> yeah, it was literally you just got there. It was like the now. first night. And were y'all drinking? Was there something yeah, going was, on where you were drinking? Okay. Yeah, it was definitely true. Yeah. yeah, okay. So there was a lot of alcohol involved, yeah, obviously. You didn't even oh, need yeah. It. You didn't oh, yeah, no. John Brown. You know what? John Brown was like, oh, no, no. So what is going on with 100 Proof's camera? It's I like the camera, autofoc- I just took autofocus off of right now. Okay, got you. <laughs> so um, so, so anyway. Humble, humble, flex, <laughs> humble flex that it's uh, yeah, a yeah. control camera. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not texting. I was doing that. By the way, okay. sir, the crew took us to the liquor store that night. Just that oh, one. okay, that good. You know how that goes. Hey, listen. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you how that works. And we didn't have to spend our per uh, diem. They bought it. Uh, and they paid for it. So you know how that works. That's the point. <laughs> they give you the per diem because here's your food. What are you going to spend your money on? Get liquor. Lit. That way they're not pumping us full of liquor. I, we bought our own liquor. We didn't do it. That's fucking genius. I, I could swear they bought it too. Because I told them, I said, I don't have a job right now, so this is going to pay my rent when I get back. And they <laughs> were like, all right, right what do you need? He just <laughs> bought all the alcohol. But the I, thing I is, should have said that. I didn't say that at all. I spent money on booze. But we didn't even need alcohol. You put 10 white I kids who want to rap in one room oh, together. I, it was yeah. so weird. It felt like, what planet are we on? And then take your phone away. You can't talk to nobody. can't watch TV. We yeah. were forced to interact because... I'm just gonna stare at a wall. So it was like it was crazy, but 
Yeah. Misfit, so <laughs> Misfit where, where were you during the whole, like when it oh. went down? I feel like you were just like, this has nothing to do with me. Like, yeah, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> so, well, that's why I wasn't there. I'm like, I'm gonna hit on the pretty girl. Like, you let y'all be fucking loud and stupid. And I was back there. Then I, then I'll be, I'll be really honest. I have to throw your business out there, which Sully never caught on. Cut on. I don't think a couple days, but um, when you see a little a girl take her purse to the bathroom a couple times, I'm like, all right, I'll holler at you next week. So I was smart enough to catch up that Sully just fell in puppy love. But I'm like, all right. So we're we're out of the out of the spectacle of the uh. Of the spectacle. Yeah, of, of the dildos. <laughs> I don't want to catch Yo, flying dildos so, like I'm so. Bill Kreischer. <laughs> that Yo, the whole Yo, I so, fell over a chair, which was amazing. Yo, I just remember hearing that, because I, I didn't want to see it. All I heard was the audio of them playing it back, and I'm hearing... Yo, I'm gonna show this punk who he really is, and Sully's going exactly, exactly, and, <laughs> like that's all I heard, and I hit the floor. Like I was laughing so hard, I was crying, and the makeup person was trying to powder me, and my eyes were like watering, and she's like, "Can you like wipe your eyes?" And I'm like, "Wait, can you play that oh again?" Man. I'm gonna show this motherfucker who exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That exactly broke the VH1 mics. You could hear it tweak out on the airing. Yo, dude, it was I, yo. I was ready. I, you know, I'm lucky I fell over that chair because I was looking to yeah, get kicked right. off the show in the first night. Yo, in oh, reality. I'm, and then, yo, when Just Rom said to Persia, "Could you not use that word around me?" <laughs> and she said, yeah. "Well, I don't see no doors." <laughs> like, True. She was a, she was so <laughs> official, like a ref with oh a whistle. My God. She was fucking official like a ref with a whistle. Yeah, person. man. I fucking love that girl. Um, so so anyway, so we shoot the next episode. We shoot episode one and we shoot episode two. We go to 1520 Sedgwick and then we do the whole um, <clears throat> name that. Word chain right. search. I'm sorry. Can I ask about the N word chain? Yeah. What about it? So y'all manufactured it overnight? Or you had it waiting because you knew some oh, one of us. Yo, that's a great that's question. That's a really good question. Mm-hmm. That is a great question. You know what? I don't know. Because all mm-hmm. I know is when I got there for that episode, they were like, yo, present her with this. <laughs> that was a quick- and I'm like, and they I had opened, to know. And I literally I opened it. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hello, Misfit. How hello. That's my home. So right so um <laughs> it must have been really strange for you um coming from outside the u.s being like you know a girl who is a transplant into the five boroughs into brooklyn um growing up on hip-hop you know being multicultural but also multinational was it a bit of a culture shock for you how the show was kind of manifesting and creating itself um, I mean, I'd already been in New York about, I think it was like four years before the show aired. And I was using a studio up in like Gun Hill Road in the Bronx. So I was, it kind of wasn't, I was kind of used to the whole things that wasn't too, too unusual for me, I suppose. Cause I was already like in that scene for a while. So. So getting into, so, so I, w- I want to understand how you guys got on the show. Like, cause I never understood that. I either. actually got asked to be on the show. I didn't even audition. Wow, really? Yeah. Like, half and half. Her and John Brown. They, um, a I friend don't. who was friends with one of the producers or something, I think they wanted another female. They only had two females on the show. They wanted another girl. And they're like, he knew I was already rapping and already doing stuff for a while. And so I, I, I actually thought it was going to be like on some fly on the wall documentary. I didn't really know what it was. So they told me to pack a bag. I, didn't, I only packed a bag for like a couple. I didn't really pack all my makeup or my, and get my hair done or my nails done or like, I just thought it was like an overnight thing. And then I'm like, in this house, I can't leave. And I'm like, Shit, I got none of I was like, if I had known I was going to be on TV, I was like, you know, I would have sorted myself out. But um, yeah, I didn't realize it was, um, I didn't really know what it was before I kind of just stepped in. And suddenly I'm like in a hotel the night before in Yonkers and I'm just like, in the show. I think all you guys all knew each other because you'd been auditioning. And so I was like the outsider and everyone's like, who the fuck is this bitch? <laughs> I'm like, oh, who's, this, it, like, who's this like model thing she's she can rap? It did seem like Misfit and John Brown were yeah. ringers because yeah. they had flown us. So like I had got filmed for a documentary in ATL and it wasn't about white rappers, but I was the only white rapper featured in it. And it was for VH1, but it never came out. So 
the casting director for the White Rapper Show saw that. She told me, come to the audition. You're going to jump the line. Just basically show up, and we'll probably send you to New York. We get to New York, and we're in this hotel for a week, and we couldn't even, like, really, like, leave our rooms. We just so had you guys to- were hanging out. So you guys No, nah, like, out. barely, barely. Like, they put some pizzas out in the main lobby and be like, go eat pizza. And I'll see Sully and be like, yo, what's up, bro? Or whoever we met. But it was like that for Go a back week. to your room. <laughs> right, exactly. So then when we do the NYU thing and we see all these other crazy people, we're like, is there another hotel with like all these other people in it? And then when we finally pull up to the White House, that was the first time that we saw Misfit and John Brown. And we were like, who is this? And, and we then, already seen then, all the actors. Like the, John the, Brown had the shades, Misfit like, looking on. like a dime. And we were just like, yo, they got some ringers. Like we're the, we're the real ones and they're just the Hollywood oh, ones. Yeah. But I, but let me say this: When Misfit came to Atlanta after the show, she was in her I, own skin. There, she she's herself. She she was more plugged in in different places than I was. She'll land and be like, "Yo, Sham, you got a studio? I got some beats from the Heat Makers. We're gonna make some tracks." I'm like, "The Heat Maker? Like the Dipset Heat Makers? I got a studio." And then she's like, "Cool, because I'm gonna go to the club later and meet DJ Burn One. You want to meet him?" I'm like, DJ Berwin, who just did Gucci Man and Young Joe's tape? Yeah, I want to meet him. And he ended up doing my tape. She's like, bet. And then I'm going to go get a tattoo from oh, yeah, this one, right? this one. You want to meet him? And Randy's my big bro now. So Miss <laughs> yeah. just started making plays. I'm like, she's a G. Straight yeah. up. Miss Misfit took me to see Ice T. She took me to a body count show, and yeah, I still no. to this day talk about it. Remember the body count show? I was like, I got to go hit this. Oh my God, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I got you. Kind of was in the scene kind of before the show. So, like, obviously, we've known Proof and being on tour with all that lot for years and stuff. So, yeah, had I got had a few connects. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's because of you. I got to be in a mosh pit at a body count show. That's like, <laughs> check. I forgot about that shit. Where was it? Oh, I have no idea. Someplace in New York, I would imagine. <laughs> I like it was Irvin Plaza. Yeah, I'll never forget it. I don't know what it was, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> oh, no, I just remember being in the mosh pit. I remember you in the mosh pit being like, I'm so happy to be here. They're playing Cop Killer. I'm like, this is happy. for. I, I grew up on that. So it's like I was a little boy. I wasn't allowed to have that. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't allowed to listen to a lot of that stuff. So as an adult, <laughs> being there, like meet nice tea and then being like, cool, I'll see you. I'll be in the mosh pit. Yeah, we'll, we'll be like, we're like backstage or something in the green room. Yeah, yeah. Coming yeah. back to me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then good. I was like, I got to head out front. I'll be. I'll be back. Were you, were you in New York? Didn't you and Persia become roommates after the show? Who, me? You. Oh, no. I just ended up at Persia's house. Oh, I could have, like, I ended, uh, yeah, like I just, roommates. I'm like, for real? Yeah. <laughs> nah. One, okay. okay, so there was a, um, there was an interview in Hot right No, there was an interview yeah. in Hot 97, and I had j- happened to just be in the city. I was doing something in the city. I think I was in Queens. So I called her and was like, hey, what are you up to? You want to hang out tonight? We ended up going to like comedy shows and just kicking it. The That's next it day, was. the next morning, they had her come to Hot 97 for a, um, for an interview with John Brown. And I was like, do they want me to come? And she was like, <laughs> I got Sully right here. Do you want Sully to come? And they were like, oh, we don't know if he can make it down from, from Boston. And she was like, nope, he's laying here right next to me. <laughs> and I was like, y'all, I'm y'all ready to like, go. Y'all were like lit and y'all called me and y'all were like, sham. What's up? <laughs> we're roommates now. Y'all must have been drunk or something. Oh, I was yeah. Like, oh, for real? Yeah, they're roommates? They like, that's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. She came up to uh, she came up to Boston, too. And we got that's we cool. got, we got got wild in Boston as well. That's but, awesome. yeah. I imagine. Throw a little uh, uh, G-Chad love in here. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. I, when my my first tour of the hype, I did right after the show was done. Well, immediately when the show was on, I got a blood clot and died from touring. That was mm-hmm. great. Literally three months in the hospital. I spent the, most of the show being in the hospital bed, not getting to watch it. Coming up there, went yeah. on tour. When I got up to Pennsylvania, um, G Child was there and I was playing Crocodile Rock, uh, this, this club there. And I think there's some beef. Like we had, to, we had a sneaker in or something. I don't know. Cause she's fucking crazy. I love her so much. She let us stay, like my entire band stayed at her house. And we're all like laid up on the ground and in, in like pillowcases because we had done. I came like eight hours the next show. She's the best. She's she's so great. I wish she could be here. Yeah, I love G Chow. She's the best. Yeah. So like she's let me and she'd fall back get into work. Come that way. She'd always you know hit me up. She shows so much love. She's such a yeah. Best. It's a shame she's not here right now. I uh I found out about the White Rapper show from a piece of paper blowing down Hollywood Boulevard that was covered with dirt and water, and my rap partner <laughs> picked it up and he's like. He took took a picture of it and sent it to me when he was working at Whole Foods. He said, I don't know what this is, but 
MTV VH1 is doing some white rapper thing. We tried to send it in, never heard anything. Put our uh, app tape together, me rapping, and put it on YouTube. We were the only thing that said white rapper show application. So it hit the front uh, SEO page on Google. Sasha hit me up on a YouTube message. First time I ever received a message on YouTube and was like, can you be in New York on Monday? And that was it. That's how you got wow. on the show. Yeah. So Willie Wonka shit. Yeah. That's <laughs> like some fantasy near. That's like, yo, that's like the, the fucking golden ticket, 100 yeah. proof. <laughs> Literal serendipity. Like that's but, not, crazy. but no, I asked him, I was like, well, why me? And, you know, it's because of the politics, you know? Awesome. They like, we, we want a wild white boy. Well, so. we're all, we were all a very niche character, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that's a big part of it, right? It's like yeah. everybody has to represent a certain section of, you know, where the ripple kind of went from. And, and a lot of people didn't understand that. Like, you know, for years and 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 years, I keep hearing, is there going to be another one? Oh, my God. Is there going to be a white rapper show, you know, volume two? Is there going to be, you know, this and this? And I'm like, you guys don't understand. It was a social experiment, right? Exactly. It was It was not supposed to be a finding the next great white hope. It was about how far did the ripple go from 1520 Cedric Boulevard to this incredible diverse cast of human beings that all love hip hop in a different way, shape or form. You got hundred proof. Who's definitely, you know, much more leaning towards the rock and rockabilly hip hop, but loves rock him. And then you have, you know, G child who, you know, grew up on, you know, vanilla ice and Marky Mark, but you know, rhymes like fucking dip set. So, you know, it's just like a weird, it was this weird enclave of people and for me, like, I was the purest, yeah. you know, I was, and for me, it was real simple. I'm a purist. Like, you know, I, I come from a place where there was no records ever recorded, like things that I listened to, things that I was moved by. There was no recorded hip hop. There was, there was no thing. There was no such thing as hip hop. There was dudes dancing on the floor, dudes writing on the walls, dude DJing in parks. And we were just, you know, rocking parties. And we're doing the knowledge. And that was like the fifth element. Like, there was no idea. You know, it's funny. I was listening to Grand Mix of DST. He said, we've gotten so diluged to the culture of hip hop that people forget that when, when we heard people call it hip hop, that was a derogatory thing to say about the culture. Mm. Like, we didn't even like that term. And I'm telling you first person, he's right. I was like, oh, fuck, that's right. That was like some coined phrase in the New York Times that a New Yorker, like... We didn't have a name for this. There was no, there was no like business of hip hop. Like there was, when I told my mother I was gonna be a rapper, she was like, "What do you mean rap gifts at Sears? Like that? What do you mean you're gonna be a rapper? Like you're gonna rap gifts at Macy's? The fuck is that? You're going to college, asshole. You got a four year scholarship, a free ride to the St. Louis School of Music, at George Washington University. You're going there, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna be a rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, and then you know. Blank years later, that was 1984, 2008, 2009. We got all of y'all that represent all different parts of, of the culture. It was, it, was, it was crazy. So anyway, so Misfit was the ringer. John Brown was the <laughs> ringer. Sham, you auditioned. Sully, did you audition? I, wanna have... I got an email randomly, and it was like, hey, come to New York and audition. So I was like, sure. Where I was hungry. You I was... About it? Oh, you but... said you found a thing on the floor, right? Yeah. What'd you say? I couldn't hear. I was wondering, why did you guys hear about it? Like, um, I yeah, I got it from an email, an email. and then I and then I went to New York and I just rap. I had already had. That was a, it. Uh, I was go ahead, hundred proof. I'm sorry. Like, go ahead, hundred. No, I was in like a I was on like a national touring band, and uh, we had just got off of. Well, Tommy Boy went bankrupt, and all that weird stuff happened. I kind of went in and out, and I think Sasha or somebody else too was at the time of that band was uh like an a and r guy uh and i could be speaking that wrong of who it was for sure i know he knew even when he knew the band which i'm gonna name because it's like an ex-girlfriend you don't bring up um but i was contacted that i'm like i don't want to do this i'm already doing stuff it's gonna be silly then i'm like i take myself less seriously than anybody a few times did but i had to go through two auditions still i last minute they said like literally the last day come to atlanta because there was i'd missed the one by me I'd, i was on tour the closer one I got back, and at the time I had a '77 Lincoln Mark V, and it so, wouldn't get. It was not getting uh, to Atlanta. I had a buddy or a truck. I drove there straight, like the whole drive. I'm like trucker blush and like fucking energy drinks to get up there. I did an audition, like <laughs> out of my mind. 
like I was so sleep deprived. And then I had nothing prepared. I remember just start freestyling for him. And it was like, you know, calling out the people in the audience, you know, right in front of me. Then, you know, just going on about the casting people, man, they're just dying laughing. <laughs> and then I got the call back yeah, like the day, like, oh, yeah, come to New York, like tomorrow. Like, what's your shoe size? What's this? Pack a bag. <laughs> and that was that. But I did two audition steps, but I still, for, I'm pretty sure. And I turned a couple down, like, no, no. Then finally, yeah, fuck it, let's do this thing. And that was, someone had found me from something, but I was, you know, in a band that was already fairly big, but it was, more the rap rocky stuff, but I was it was a weird transition of like not being fine of it, but I think it was someone who was an AR. I know for sure Sasha had worked with them on something else. But um, but I still it wasn't a free pass for me. I still had to do the auditions, two steps, like one before New York. So it was a process. That must have been dope to like have them tell you you were on because I called them the night that they remember Shamrock, we were in the hotel and they were calling everybody to tell them they made the show the night before. Did they call you? Yeah, vaguely. They didn't call me. Bring back my memory. So <laughs> every, everybody, it was like the last night and they sent all of us back to our rooms. They're like, we'll call you tonight if you made the show. And like, it was like 1130. And I was like, why hasn't my phone rang yet? <laughs> and uh, so I called them and I was like, what's up? And they were like, oh, nobody called you. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was already on a plane. They were like, I was just, like, I just get on a plane. And then they called me and said, no, nah, come back. I think there, there, was really? there was definitely some changes. Wow. I know there was for sure there was a cast member. I won't list names out and stuff, but um, woke for the days of our social experiment. Uh, pretty sure search called me wrong on this, but um, I know we were gonna have a uh, transgendered cast member at one time, and I think the thing was too much for them. And oh like, yeah, that's no, right for things. And and I think maybe G took that spot. That's um, right. It was, but the different things. I was I'm a cocky bastard. I saw all you guys. I'm like, yeah, I'm. I don't even need to try it. I'm making a show. Look at me. <laughs> and again, I'm, right. I was the me. There was no other the me. Not even talent wise. I'm like, I'm the spectacle of which I am. They needed this role. Here we go. I'm, I'm there either way. Yeah, proof. So, was that that was a wrapper out of the bay? Wasn't it catastrophe or something like that? I, I'm not sure. And even with not knowing, I'm not I'm not gonna yeah. throw out. I was today years old else. when I learned all of this. <laughs> and by the hey, way, don't worry about it, Sham. It's all good. <laughs> they were, it's all good. I can't hear they it. were they were dope as fuck, too. I let check some stuff later. I'm like, this is they they were legit like it wasn't yeah. just they wouldn't have made it just for the the niche of you know needing a um you know a, a different uh sexual preference or gender identity role they were just dope you know and and you wouldn't have known and that that was awesome hell maybe the casting didn't even know you know it, that wasn't important they were they know who they are and again i don't want to throw someone's dirty laundry if they said they didn't want to be a part of the show for sure but um there's that's probably what maybe some of you guys i know like Sham, uh, shout out to fucking Stess the MC. Stess, my homie. Yeah, he is so Stess. dope. Yeah. And there's some, so many people that are like, I, you know, like you're the, it's a TV show, man. You can't have two fucking, you know, Joey's on friends. It's that way. And I think it came down to you, the same area, same kind of thing, you know, do this and they go away. But it would have been like Search, you said, they didn't, people didn't understand the social experiment. How boring would have been if there was just an entire show of white kids who wanted to sound like the, you know, the next dipset artist and everyone sounded the same and everybody acted the same, said the same slang, acted the same. What a boring show that would have been. You yeah. know, so you had to have all the different things and it's to bounce off and use personalities mingled and you know and clashed. Obviously we wouldn't have the, the Persia John Brown, you know, big cockle. <laughs> but I mean it was definitely the spots we had to be. Yeah, but there were so many other debates. I mean, not, not even debacles. There's so many debates about the show. It's not even debacles. There's so many debates that went on, like the entire the entire season. Like, um, I remember another big debate, and I'd love to talk about this between us, like you know, as family. Um, the was Persia's eight bars better than just Rhyme Sixteen when Persia got kicked off the show. Right. When we were told her tell her to step off, that was the nursery rhyme, you know, battle. And and Persia did eight bars and couldn't remember the rest of everything that she wrote. But she did uh, the Jack Be Nimble. And to this day, people come up to me. They're like, yo, Persia's that slick. Persia's that bitch. <laughs> like she did that. Right. And she had like eight bars of a fire and then she lost it, but just had 16. And I remember like we were debating behind the scenes like. I yeah. felt bad for y'all. That's a tough decision because I know what, what is just, right? So it was a hard one. Was, yeah, I get it. You know, I get it. But you know, but your run was dope, but it was just like, it was one of these things where it was like, okay, which is better? Is it eight bars of fire or six or doing what you're supposed to do, right? Which was just did a 16. He memorized it. It was dope. Was hers. It was such, 
a tough deliberation for us. Um, and I wonder if you guys even thought about it after when, when, it, when it ended um, and what you guys thought. I, I felt thought, like I stopped. Yeah. I stopped remembering my rhymes once I smuggled some <laughs> weed inside the house. I got some weed inside the house and I forgot all my rhymes. I was like, "Oh man, I'm not gonna remember anything." Me too. It's, I was it's, like, also, it's I hard. To, it's hard to memorize 16 bars like on the spot when you got cameras in your face and you're like under but pressure. Y'all tried to ice us too because you'd be yeah. like Shamrock, step forward, and like then there'd be I, like an I, eight minute pause of silence. You're not allowed yeah. to talk, and you just lights hitting right. you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. like. That's like when you call a timeout before your free throw right. and you're trying to ice them. Right. So it was like, plus the pressure. Plus, you didn't like us. I was convinced <laughs> that you didn't like any That's of us, real. Search. That's really and, I, and I have family members discredit me winning the show, and they said, you only won because Search liked you. And I'm like, he didn't <laughs> like me. I don't think he liked any of us. <laughs> it wasn't until the show was over and I got to kick it with you and your wife at the wrap-up party that I was like, all right, he doesn't hate me. <laughs> but he didn't let's, he let's be real for me. No, no, no. Let's be real clear about this. And let's be a hundred percent clear about this. I absolutely didn't not like y'all. That's bullshit. I respected all of y'all. But I couldn't tell y'all that. <laughs> and I damn sure couldn't show y'all that. Because it was a contest. Mm. So if I if the camera went click and it was all love. How fake would that would have been? Yep. So I would I had to stay in my element, and this is what I wanted to share with y'all, which you, you you can't possibly know because I haven't told this to anybody. For me, it was real simple. Like I saw this show like this, and I'm just gonna keep it a buck with all of y'all. My philosophy walking into the show and every day that I was on that set was this. All y'all motherfuckers owe your life to me. Fuck you. You owe your fucking life to me. True. You don't even fucking walk on this earth without third base MC search. Fuck y'all. Show and prove now. Fuck y'all. <laughs> now, off of that, with your skills, I was like, hmm, okay, nice. Okay, dope. Okay, dope. But still, my attitude on set was, fuck y'all. Y'all owe me your air you breathe. Fuck y'all. Now, that was because that was what I had to do. It was told to me to be hard. It was told to me to be an enforcer, to not let anything slip. And also, the same thing that all of y'all got, imagine me times a thousand. Lord Jamal, Nas, Jeez, Jay, oh, Jay Ru the Damager, OC, Nonfiction, all my people, Mark Echo, all my people. So I, I couldn't let any of y'all slide on anything. So when the shows would come out, they were like, motherfucking right, Search. Motherfucking right. Tell them fucking kids, man. They better know. How the fuck did they not know Run's house? The fucking... Bimmy coming up to me. McG Ken Supreme coming up to me. Like, yo, you motherfucking right, Search. You know what I'm saying? But I respected the shit out of all of y'all. Because I'm telling you, the I was there. I know what you guys had to do. I was there 18 hours a day just like y'all because I was a cast member just like y'all. The difference was how I approached the show was this is something that I feel honored to be a part of because there's a small part of me that is the reason that this exists in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that was my approach to judging and hosting the show. But it wasn't a like a dislike. I thought all of y'all, I loved all of y'all. And I especially loved Persia because she's from my hood. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved you know, Persia. Everybody you know, loved yeah. Persia. And I still, you know, and I still love Persia. And I told this to Sully, like, I fucked up my relationship with Persia. I had to make amends with Persia. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I I I I fucked that up and I love Persia, but I, I owe her an amends and I made an amends to her. Um, but I also held her down when she needed me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's my people. Thank you for joining us for the part one of the Search Says Podcast White Rapper Show Reunion Special. Join us for part two next week. 
gonna have some crazy, funny, and engaging, insightful conversations like this. Check it out. I remember I was taking all 100 proofs backwards. I was like, let me get some of them backwards, man. I, I think I, I remember thinking like, Take watch for you. I was like, this gonna make him fuck up. <laughs> Keep smoking, so Keep smoking. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I know. I mean, you was my comp, point. bro. You was my comp, man. So DJing is a win win because I can sneak my own music in there while I'm playing. And I've played like all over, all over London, Ibiza, Toronto, all over the States. And he looked over to me <laughs> for me to kind of co sign the line. Right? To co sign the line, right? And I did this. Right. But, then I, but then I looked up and John's hand started doing this <laughs> and I just wanted to hug him. <laughs> yo, I wanted to be like, yo, time out, time out. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. It's okay. Breathe. Had to fight for it. Yeah. So lost it. Got it back. Showed him. Oh, I was built for it. Yep. Got the, got the PhD. Dope. Thank you, man. Mm. Uh, at SC, went to UCLA. Uh, like I said, study what uh, Nipsey was talking about. Buy back the block. Community owned. Self-determined real estate. Got behind black and brown folks and let it rip. Can I just say, he kind of changed my life because I had no idea who Waylon Jennings was when I met him. <laughs> he had a shirt on. You're that welcome. Had, remember, yo, for real, thank you. Um, he had a shirt on with Waylon Jennings, and I was like, is that Superfly? <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that. Even, even y'all, just seeing y'all happy and healthy and smiling, like, that's the most important thing to me. Like, 2020, like, shit got mm. real. So, like, for the rest of our lives, like, Let's just cut out like the bullshit, the ego, yeah, bro. the all that fake shit. All that coming at you next week for part two of the Search Says Podcast White Rapper Reunion Special. Peace.